So I actually have several projects that are open and ongoing and I decided to go on YouTube and poll everybody over there and decide which uh, video I will go forward with right now. And according to those voters, which there were 295 of them, they want to see uh, Drake May. And in the poll, I said it was NC State's film, but it's actually the Syracuse game. But they wanted to see some film of Drake May. And as I said in the poll, I'm going to do a deep dive if they do indeed draft him. And I plan on doing all three of the other topics as well. That said, let's just jump right into the film. Now, May definitely had some moments in the Syracuse game. I'm not going to say it was a it was a perfect game, but he was pretty dang good. He was 33 of 47, completing 70% of his passes for 442 yards and three touchdowns. But on this play right here, honestly, he probably could have thrown it to two different receivers here and had the same outcome. If you see it the first time around, you'll see... The receiver catches it, and he stumbles just short of the goal. You don't really know at first if he stumbles short of the goal or not. But then when you watch it a second time, you'll see the guy right there in the center of the field. He's also wide open, and I actually think he probably had the better path to the goal line. But the guy in the center of the field ends up getting the pass, and it was actually a really pretty pass, actually. You can't ask for much better than that. If you watch back from the other direction, you'll see he reads the pressure well. I mean, he steps right up into the pocket, gets away from the defender, and you see he just unleashes a nice pass. I mean, that's a nice little cannon pass right there. And it goes right over the shoulder. The receiver, I mean, I guess you could say he stumbled a little bit, but he had to lay himself out. So I guess the ball was a little bit long, but it was in a place where only the receiver could get that. So you can't ask for much better than that. It sucks that his, you know, his extension didn't go beyond the goal line. Now this play here was another pretty pass to the back corner of the end zone. And I mean, just the thing of beauty there, it kind of cuts out at the end there, but looking at it from the other angle though, will let you appreciate this thing a little bit more. As you see, he just steps back, throws a nice ball to the back corner. And I mean, it's right in the bread basket. Nobody else is catching that ball except for that receiver right there. Who by the way, makes the play look pretty easy too. I mean, that was a hell of a pitch and catch. Another similar play right here, and, and quite honestly, this probably should have been a touchdown. Uh, I've looked over this play a few different times, and to me, it looks like the uh, the receiver has the ball come off of his hand right there. But if you look and see, the defender swats it to begin with at the, at the line of scrimmage. He puts his hand on it. So it's kind of wobbling by the time it gets there, but it goes right off the receiver's hand. That should have still been a touchdown right there. But it was just a deflected pass and you know i guess the receiver didn't really get a good chance to see where it was going but it's pretty impressive that the ball still made it through the defender's hand right there the deflection you know somewhat tip right there and still made it into the receiver's you know backside right there which was where the play was going to go originally and probably should have been caught now here's the first little sign of proof here that uh that may was under a lot of duress as the quarterback last year for the UNC Tar Heels. As he comes out of this play right here, you actually see that there's a couple of things that are developing, even a guy that's kind of breaking deep, even though he's got a couple of guys with him. But a short guy here that's that's you know could get him a good four or five yards. But as the play starts to move forward, as you can see, his guy's already been knocked over at this point. The, uh, the right tackle over there has just been compromised, and the play breaks down instantly crazy enough that may is able to actually you know keep his composure and be able to to get out of the pocket and gain a few yards although he has to go into the you know to the play full head on this play was a great design and even maybe even better execution by the receiver and the quarterback on this play if you watch how everything takes off right here I mean, the whole play is built on getting the ball to that man right there as he comes out of his progression. And I'm going to tell you that it's it's perfect the way that he sells the uh, the handoff here, pulls it in, play action really works it all together there. The man makes his move right there, though, and, and kills it. He's wide open at that point, and he drops it right in. Watch it back from this angle. You really see how pretty that was over the, over the side of him right there. I mean, nobody's catching that pass but the receiver. It's right there, it hits him right perfectly in the hands. He's able to tuck it away and bring it in. You know, I wanted to show this play, not so much about that they didn't really gain anything in this play. He didn't really read anything in this play, but everybody kind of has this theory in their head that that May's kind of a, of a slower pocket quarterback per se, where the, the other guys out there, maybe Jaden Daniels and, and uh, Caleb Williams, maybe could be a little bit quicker and, and move a little faster. 
But I tell you, if you watch this play right here, you'll see that once he sees the pressure, he's able to get out of there real quick. And, and, and if you ask my opinion, he does the smart thing in the end by sliding in this play. I mean, you know, you want your quarterback to be able to do the right thing, the smart thing, and also not get injured in the process. But as you see right there, he sees instantly that the, uh, the pressure is coming, moves out of the pocket, and slides. And to me, if you watch this in real time, that's pretty fast right there. Um, you see him get out and, yeah, slide. Next gen clocked that at like 19 miles an hour, by the way. You know, when I first saw this next play, I wasn't really all that impressed. I was like, well, what happened there? It looked like the defender got him. But then when I watched it back a second time, I saw he was able he was able to actually get his progression off, get, you know, the pass out. And not only that, it was a pretty damn good pass, too. And his guy, you know, goes up for it, ends up being one of those 50-50 balls. And, yeah, if you watch it back from this side, look at this angle right here. It shows, look, I mean, yeah. I mean, yeah, that, that's, that's a really good pass, actually. As you see right there, he just barely gets it away as the defender lays into the side right there. And, and the pass goes off to the side, and the receiver goes up and makes actually probably a better play on the catch right there than the pass. But both of those are, are really what you're looking for out of that. Now, obviously, in the pro game, that receiver will have to get two feet down. So, yeah, you could question that play right there as far as if you're looking at it from a perspective of being you know what he is in the next level or not but that is one hell of a play right there for him to be able to get that off through that pressure he sees it coming stands in there gets it off completed pass again i wanted to show that he's not just you know some stand you know stand in the pocket statue kind of guy like he will move around and get outside of the pocket make moves do whatever he has to do and he will slide some comparisons I saw of him were to uh, with Justin Herbert. I'm not so certain that, that Herbert really can, can get outside of the pocket that fast and will make defenders miss him. You know, I like watching quarterbacks play the game, but one thing that I really don't like all that much of is looking at film and breaking it down because everybody in the world has a different opinion when it comes to quarterbacks. And everybody also has an opinion uh, of what the quarterback should bring to the field and maybe even each quarterback should bring to the field and how they should bring it to the field and everybody sees the film differently. For instance, you might first see this play right here that we're gonna look at and say to yourself, well, you know, at least he's able to get the ball away because some pressure came. But if you watch it a little bit closer, you'll see that he probably should have thrown the ball as soon as he saw his man right here break. And I don't know why he didn't, to be quite honest with you, this was a quick hit route. He should have just hit him right there. And you see him pull the ball back too, like he was going to. But my thought is, is that maybe he thought that he that was going to be one of the guys breaking downfield was going to be open, you know, and his guy sitting over here on the sideline, maybe he could come back to him. I don't know. But what he did was he pulls it down and the defensive line, you know, breaks it up in the center of what's going on over there. And I'm going to let you know, UNC's offensive line was not good last year and they broke down. And instead of being able to turn this play into a four or five, six, seven, eight yard gain off to the side of the field there on second down, he ended up having to dump the ball off to his running back who doesn't even get but a yard. Thankfully, you know, in this situation, he didn't give up a sack, but still at the same point in time, he also did give up some valuable yards there. If you watch it back from here from this angle, you can see him right at the very beginning. He jerks over and sees what's going on over there, and he almost lets go of the ball right there. And my opinion is, is he should have let go of it right there. But essentially he doesn't, and the line starts to break down. He moves out, and yes, he, at least he does get rid of it. Now, to me, some of this film just shows me that this guy is young. He's still learning how to go through his progressions. Maybe he's still learning how to read the field all the way across. But on this play right here, it's pretty obvious that he kind of scans the field as soon as he grabs the ball and then just dials right into one of the guys off to the right. Now, the reason why I have a tiny bit of a problem with that is, is the linebacker right here in the center of the field He's ready to play, you know, a little bit of zone coverage right there in the center of the field and lets that receiver go by who's right there coming across the, you know, the 40, the 47, the 48 yard line, right as May is looking at the other side of the field and lets go of it. This guy's cutting across. He could have had an easy, you know, pick up here in the center of the field. Who, who knows what this could have turned into right here? We really don't know. 
you know, if he would have stopped what he was doing up there, you know, and, and then shifted back this way, maybe one of these safeties would have came across and this would have only been a, a short game. But these guys are all sucked inward this way and that way, looking at the play over here. Eyes are all this direction. This guy is open right here. Now, the result of the play ends up being an incomplete pass. And if you watch it back from this direction, you'll see why, because it was not a good pass at all. And it was actually one of those passes that you see and you're kind of like, wait a minute, which player was that for? And you, and you watch it back again and you and you realize that it was probably for the, the, the longer receiver there. Maybe the longer receiver thought the shorter receiver is going to get it and didn't react fast enough. Whatever happened there, the ball ends up almost getting intercepted right here instead of, uh, you know, falling incomplete. The defender wasn't even paying attention there enough to be able to see it coming. Like, I wouldn't put that, uh, you know, in a gaff moment kind of situation. But you also had your running back out here that could have been a little outlet pass. Maybe could have gained a couple yards. I know that the uh, the eyes are always on moving the ball down the field, but sometimes dink and dunk works. And, and if you're going to force it into a situation where you almost get an interception, you know, what the hell? Now, on this play right here, it's kind of obvious. It's painfully obvious, actually, to see that May sees a lane right here and takes off running instead of reading the field, which to me showed him not only a running back off to the left over here but a guy in space ready to block for him and a couple receivers downfield that might have been able to stretch things out a little bit where this play could have been a pretty decent gain I, I you know you can't guess as to how many yards it would have gotten but it could have opened something up right there and instead he ran through that um that lane that he saw and he does get a first down there and he does slide you know and in college this is going to work probably I don't know what a good six, seven times out of 10. And the pros, that that's that percentage is gonna go down a little bit. And he might even get injured on a play like this. And being able to slide is a great thing. And he does have some moves for a guy that big. As you see from this angle right here, he does get in some space and make a couple of little, you know, little shifty little moves there. I mean, don't get me wrong. I do like to see the man get in open field and kind of just shift around and make the defenders miss like that. Cause let's be honest, he did just juke the shit out of him right there. Look at that, look at that. Uh, watch it once more in real time. Uh, slide now this play right here again he's not reading the field all the way and he takes his eyes off of his man right here and this is actually one of those slow reacting plays and he takes his eyes off of the off of the guy he should be watching right there breaking for the sideline who ends up by his lonesome down here as you see this man right here down here on this other side of the field now as far as i could tell this is the moment right here where his eyes came off of the receiver and went to the other direction as his man is breaking to this side of the field. In my opinion, that's when he should have let go of the ball. An NFL quarterback, when he sees his receiver breaking towards the sideline or wide open like that, he lets go of the ball before the receiver gets there. Again, to me, this is just a situation where he needs more experience. But instead, May trusts his instincts a little bit on this one and takes off running and it gets really nowhere. He maybe gets, what, a yard there? Watch it back from this direction and you'll see. He watches the play develop, but he just decides that he's seen enough and he just trusts his legs more and runs out to this direction and there's nothing there i have absolutely no idea why he didn't just heave this ball right here because i feel like his receiver had a step and probably could have had two steps had he released it but he decides to pull the ball in and as you see he does get the first down there but he takes a, a hit over the, the course of a, of a season or over the course of a, a game and a, definitely over the course of a career, you know, this could be the make or break right here in a guy who doesn't really get any big time injuries and a guy that, you know, has problems. I think the more seasoned quarterbacks would let go of this ball and see what he's got long, uh, you know, rather than take a chance of getting hurt, not really knowing what he's got short right here and running it. Although, as I said, although in the short term, he gets the first down. So, you know, if you're a college coach and you're thinking in the short term, you love this kind of thing. This is definitely a pass that he wishes, I'm sure, that he could have back. Watch his man come streaking across the field here, and he ends up wide open. I mean, no defender there forever, and the man throws it. I'm going to tell you, that was a good four or five... <laughs> maybe six yards off of the of, of the mark right there that's horrible to have your guy wide open in space like that nobody covering him and you overthrowing by that bad only thing i could think of is the defender right here at the last second may have spooked him a little bit but man it's just i don't know like wow like 
That should have been a touchdown right there. Look how far he overthrew that. Wow. That concerns me a little bit that the pressure made him feel like he had to, to zing it and he was that far off. God, that should have been a touchdown. I think uh, on this play right here, if the pressure hadn't have been as bad as it was on him from the offensive line, I think he probably could have completed this pass right here. But he was having to throw off his back foot and the ball just comes up about three yards short right there. Otherwise, that's a touchdown because, you know, as you see, he was trying to put it up there with a 50-50 ball and the ball kind of flailed a little bit because he was throwing off his back foot. I don't know if there was a miscommunication of what was going on in this play right here, but as you see, the play starts off and May turns to the right and stops and looks like he's going to just let go of the ball to the right, but his receiver is running a different route than what he, I think he thought he was. Look at him. He, he does a different route right here. Now, when he reads that, he turns and he looks for the guy on the other side, and that guy isn't out of his break yet, and at that point, the line starts breaking down, and he almost gets left like out to dry and he's probably lucky that he did not take a safety on this play and he's able to get across the, the line of scrimmage just barely like i was saying i don't know if it was miscommunication or what it was but it was a definite breakdown in the pocket and as you see you know he's able to, to make you know something out of it to where it doesn't at least turn into a safety which at least that's positive although i do believe that may have been caused by a breakdown that could have been his fault to begin with we don't know because we're not in their communication setup. You know, if we were, maybe we could know more. You know, I saw this play and it was oddly familiar of last year when Sam Howell was running uh, through the defense and, and it seemed like nobody was wanting to hit him or whatever. And it just seemed like this play reminded me of that. Although there's a couple of other moves involved in this and he didn't really take as big of a hit at the end of this, but the gain of yardage was there. You know, and you might could honestly say that his moves were a little bit better than Sam's, which I will say this guy has got uh, some agile quickness that I was not expecting when I first started looking at his film, you know, a couple weeks ago. And when I pulled this game out, I saw some of the plus and minuses of his, and I really started to see how quick he was and the way that he, you know, the way that he moved and he, he does a lot of these, these turns and these cuts. He looks more like a running back, you know, or a wide receiver than he does a quarterback, you know, but I guess that's the going thing now. Um, you know, these quarterbacks are all turning into mobile, you know, type quarterbacks now. It's like even the guys with the big arms are able, you know, to make cuts and, and run down the field as well. I think maybe he got caught trying to do too much, try to play maybe, maybe some hero ball here if you would. He should have just thrown it to the man out here, a little outlet pass over here to the side. The guy was open. Said instead he decides to take off and yeah I mean you know you see the, the outcome there it was not good you never want your quarterback to take hits but you damn sure don't want him taking hits behind the line of scrimmage obviously in this situation he's able to you know make a couple moves and maybe get outside of the pocket and not take the sack but still at the same time you know this is not the way you draw your play up and the guy out there you know in the flat that could have been a guy that he could have just hit real quick and this, this could have gotten him four or five yards instead of maybe losing a yard or gaining one and having your quarterback take another hit this is all to me all in and being the experienced quarterback take what you got don't try to force it now somebody that just reads a stat sheet will see the numbers from this play right here and just automatically think oh wow you know, he got a 75-yard touchdown or 70, what is it, four 76-yard touchdown, something like that, give or take. And they just immediately think to themselves, man, this is actually a really, you know, big play or whatever. But then when you watch the replay, you see that the ball was behind the receiver, probably should have been a pick, ended back up in the receiver's hand, and then the receiver made one hell of a play, like, on that. Which, by the way, that's not me trying to take anything away from the outcome of the play either. I mean, you know, they still got a touchdown on the play. But as you see right here, it was more like a, oh, look what I did kind of thing, you know, because the receiver actually makes one hell of a play after the defender probably should have picked that ball off. As you see, ball comes in and it's behind him and the receiver makes a kind of a tip kind of play, tips it to himself. And the defender just is a second or maybe like a millisecond off of getting that interception and then it's kind of a tussle for it and eight just takes off with it you know from what i've seen this guy could have really benefited probably sticking around for another year in college 
but his talent level is extremely high, but he needs more experience. So the type of situation he may end up going to where he gets literally tossed to the wolves is going to be a make or break kind of thing because this guy doesn't have a whole lot of experience. Last year was only his sophomore year. And actually, if you look at the stats and look at the film, you'll see that his freshman year was actually a bit better than his sophomore season. I was kind of surprised uh, in, in, the, in the games that I've watched, which I haven't watched all of his film, but I have watched the majority of it. And I was kind of surprised at what I saw as far as his quickness, being able to move around the pocket. Um, he does appear like he still, he kind of does what Sam Howell does, which is trust his feet and, and take off. And, and that can lead to, 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 to bad decisions. Um, but he is taller than Sam, so he's able to read downfield a bit better. And I feel like with more experience, I, I definitely see that his ceiling is, is definitely high. It's sky high. So I feel like, you know, what he was able to accomplish at UNC probably will be higher once he hits the NFL. The question, of course, is, is some of the things that you see on film now, you know, will he have time to be able to get better with those things in the NFL? The NFL is all about opportunities. I mean, you pay attention to what goes on. A guy gets an opportunity, and if he doesn't run with it, a lot of times he it may, you know, take an injury for him to get another opportunity. So these guys have to run with it on their first chance or everybody's going to be trying to label them a bust it's just the era that we're in everybody immediately wants to to compare somebody to somebody else you know if you're not patrick mahomes then maybe you're justin herbert and if you're not maybe you're josh allen and if you're not successful everybody will be calling him a bust it's unfortunate but it's just the way it is now dane brugler from the athletic has drake may as his fourth uh, highest rated prospect and he says with his arm strength and pacing may put a full inventory of throws on tape and showed he can comfortably operate with timing from the pocket he is a quick reaction athlete who makes off schedule plays as a scrambler and is able to rip throws from different platforms his arm can get juiced up at times and disrupt his ball placement and his progression reads are still a work in progress especially when he feels pressed to make a play may needs to cut down on reckless decisions but he is cut from a similar cloth as justin herbert with his physical gifts and smarts. And I think the reason why a lot of people that want Washington to take a quarterback levitate to May more than they would someone else is the fact that they feel like Washington maybe wouldn't have to maneuver to get him. He would be the guy that, let's say, uh, let's say Chicago ends up picking first and they don't trade out. You know, he would be the guy that would comfortably land in their lap, so to speak, you know, the safe pick. You know, you look at a guy like Jaden Daniels and his stock may grow as you get to the combine and you never quite know how high his stock might get to me he's a boomer bust product and i'm gonna tell you i have seen his film and he's better than the people they've compared him to if you haven't seen his film go over there to nfl fan zone all of it's over there the good and the bad i made one video over there and i believe it's like 45 or 50 minutes long and it's all the film but looking at those top three quarterbacks Caleb Williams is a guy that is kind of, you know, we don't know which direction the things are going to head with the number one pick, how that's all going to work out. Is Chicago going to take him? Is Chicago going to not take him? You know, right now they're trying to, they're trying to keep Justin Fields tra uh, uh, trade, you know, stock high, and they're trying to keep their possibilities open and maybe taking another quarterback while they keep the possibilities of trading that top pick. So it's like, you know, Chicago is bluffing on all levels right now. So I think everybody looks at Drake May as the safe pick but i think that a lot of people that are pessimistic about things or a lot of people that feel like this team has stung them for the last 30 years i think they look at drake may and see mitchell trubisky and it's hard to to, to argue with them about it because trubisky came out unc quarterback pick number two and has turned out to be a bust and you could you could say all kinds of things that you want to say about you know maybe he showed up in the wrong place the wrong time whatever you know, it is what it is. That's what people see. And as I said before about quarterbacks, this is an idea that gets put in people's minds, man. It's like it's it's the it's the one position where everybody has their own opinion of what the position is supposed to bring. Everybody sees different stuff on film and everybody looks at each player like it's a different setup. There's absolutely nothing we can do about it either. It's just the the, the, lay, the law of the land, so to speak, the lay of how things work. I like what I see from May, but the system he goes to 
you know it's gonna it's gonna take some patience with him i think he's gonna have he's gonna have to grow some in the pro game if he were to come to washington and be in the fact that he's already been in the air raid type system in college i think that it would probably be easier for him to transition they actually run a little bit closer to pro level situational stuff and and i think that it's a lot like what cliff kingsbury ran out at arizona but we'll you know have to wait and see how all this comes together we still got two months of stuff to come together before we even figure out how they're going to pick and they may trade out who knows what the hell is going to happen but i do feel like if they took him at two i wouldn't be angry let me know what you guys are thinking down in the comments y'all take it easy peace